Behold the victory of our God. Jesus, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Christ has risen. Alleluia. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let our hearts resound with joy. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Christ, our life, you are alive in the beauty of the earth, in the rhythm of the seasons, and in the mystery of time and space. Alleluia. Christ, our life, you are alive in the tenderness of touch, in the heartbeat of intimacy, and in the insights of solitude. Alleluia. Christ, our life, you are alive in the creative possibility of the dullest conversation, of the dreariest task, and of the most threatening event. Alleluia. Christ, our life, you are alive on this Easter morning to offer recreation to every unhealed hurt, to every deadened place, and to every damaged heart. Alleluia. Dear sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, God has opened to us the gates of righteousness, that we may enter through them. Confident in God's love, let us confess our sin. Risen Lord, we confess that we have not lived as Easter people. We have been unsure of your promise, confused about your will, and afraid in the face of danger. Like Mary, we weep at the tomb, but we do not recognize your presence. Call us by name, risen Lord, that we may know you with confidence. Forgive us our sin, 
and let our lives be a testimony to your salvation. Friends, hear these words of hope and assurance. God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. In the name of the risen Christ, we are forgiven. Almighty God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you broke the power of death and opened the way to eternal life. As the empty tomb stands witness to his triumph over death, make your church to be a bold testimony to his enduring victory in life, that all we do may proclaim to the world, Christ is risen indeed. Through Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 25, reading verses 6 through 9. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strain clear and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples the sheet that is spread over all nations he will swallow up death forever then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. A reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the gods shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly, 
with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Thus begins Matthew's account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Two women, by the light of a new dawn, trudging towards a graveyard. We can only assume that they were filled with a whole range of human emotions, an aching sadness, sorrow at the loss of a friend, the trauma of having seen that same friend tortured and cruelly executed before their very eyes, despair at how his wonderful vision of how the world could be and should be was now no more, fear of what might happen to them and fear of what might happen to the community of his friends in light of the violent reprisals that had happened against the one who had been their leader, weariness, probably levels of mental and physical and emotional exhaustion from all that they had seen and experienced over those past few days. And in all likelihood, an increased awareness of the incredible fragility of life, its vulnerability, its uncertainty, all born out of the terrible reminder that not even the greatest and the best among them could survive it. And yet, on those women trudged. On they trudged towards the place of death, perhaps bearing spices to anoint his body, but definitely bearing a lot more than that, bearing all the burden of uncertainty and fear and despair and sadness and sorrow and vulnerability and fragility. But what they discovered that day, after they trudged towards the tomb, well, it transformed them. It transformed those who they rushed to tell about it. It transformed their society, and 2,000 years later, it has and it continues to transform this world. Because what they discovered at the end of their long, trudging journey was hope. A hope that was reborn, a life that was reborn, love that was reborn, and all because Christ had risen from the tomb. The one who they thought had fallen victim and had been conquered by the worst that this world could offer, suffering and humiliation and hatred and fear and violence and torture and God-forsaken despair and estrangement and even death itself. These things had been defeated because Christ had emerged alive. Easter continues to be the most important day in the celebration of the Christian year, and it's difficult not to be together at Easter. But the good news prevails, not simply because of the story of Christ's triumph over the grave being told and retold, but rather because the resurrection is the template. It is the lens. It is the perspective through which we are called to see all of life, to see the world, to see reality itself. Now, I don't need to spend a great deal of time today playing out the parallels that might exist between our experiences and the experiences of those two women so long ago. Suffice it to say that certain recent experiences have invited all of us to have profound opportunities to remember the power of fear and despair and vulnerability and fragility and sadness and sorrow and anxiety and worry and uncertainty we have seen the innocent suffer and die, even as those women so long ago saw their innocent friend suffer and die. And we all know that there is suffering and death that is still yet to occur. Such is the nature of life. But the resurrection invites us and beckons us and assures us that there is a power that is greater than all of these difficult realities. The power of faith. The power of hope the power of love, the power of God, 
a God who willingly chose to suffer and to die in order to show each and every one of us once and for all that we need not any longer live in fear and despair because in life and in death and in life beyond death, God is and God is with us and God is powerful and God is love. This is not only the way that we as followers of Christ in the church are called to view reality. It is also, in fact, the good news that we are invited to carry out into the world in our words and in our actions. It is good news that we are invited to carry throughout human history, as our ancestors and the church have done now for the past 2,000 years. And now it is our time, as we seek to love and to serve this world that God so dearly loves, as we seek ways to reach out to others with a word of grace, a word of forgiveness, a word of neighborly compassion, a word of encouragement, as we together and individually seek to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. We don't simply do these things to be nice or pleasant, although they are nice and pleasant. Rather, we do them because we believe that living in this resurrection power, living in this resurrection hope aligns us and it aligns our lives and ultimately it aligns our world more fully with reality as it actually is and as it shall be. Trudging towards the grave is not the way that we are called to live. Rather, we are called as those women did. We are called to run and to live and to proclaim the good news to all of the world. When fear seems powerful and faith seems pointless, when despair seems overwhelming and hope seems empty, when death seems ultimate and life seems fragile, we dare to proclaim that the tomb was empty. It was good news then and it still is good news. May God bless each and every one of you and our world this Easter. And may the good news of the empty tomb permeate your very lives and live within you, blessing you and those you love this day and forevermore. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And amen. Hear the gracious words of our Savior Jesus Christ. Come to me, you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ and for a memorial of him, we do this, who on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As our Lord gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and present our prayers and thanksgivings. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Glorious God, we give you thanks and praise, for on this day creation sings, Christ is risen from the dead. He has burst forth from the tomb to break the tangles of despair and death. Love is come again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the eternal chorus of rejoicing who forever sing. Oh!
all embracing God, we give thanks for Jesus, the risen Lord of life, who rose victorious from the grave and made the whole creation new. He broke bread with sinners, fed the hungry, healed the sick, and brought liberty to the captives. Then he poured out his life in death that we might live in love. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Recalling his life, death, and glorious resurrection, we offer you these gifts of bread and wine and our lives in thanks and praise. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be for us the body and blood of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Breathe your spirit upon the whole earth that we may proclaim good news to all the world and rise together as children of your new creation. Then bring us to that new heaven and that new earth, O God, where death and pain are no more, and you dwell with us forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread, communion in Christ's body, once broken. And we share this cup, Communion in Christ's blood, once shed. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The grace and peace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Now, O God, so illumine our hearts with the radiance of Christ's presence that our lives may show forth his love in this weary world. Help us to befriend the lost, to serve the poor, to be reconciled with our enemies and to love our neighbors. Keep us faithful in your service until that day when we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal love. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, both now and forevermore. 
Amen. And now may the love of Almighty God, the grace of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the comfort and friendship of God's Holy Spirit dwell with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. challenge for this week. Um, it, I call it the resurrection cross stained glass window because I was able to paint a window. You can see I use a painter's tape, some scissors, and just this paint, uh, water paint. Um, you can use any kind of paint but make sure you can wash it afterwards uh, I know a friend of mine put a little bit of soap in her paint and, and so she tried and she was able to remove it so you can do anything you can use tissue paper you can just make your own ornament and hang it on your window the idea is to bring hope to our neighborhoods and also uh, to our own home and I hope you have fun and you send us a couple of pictures again. We would love to share uh, those pictures. And again, I hope you're enjoying this time at home, remembering that Christ uh, has risen and he has risen indeed.